Hello everyone and welcome back to Brink of Speed. My name is Mike and today I want to thank you for hitting that play button. Now before we jump into this video I just want to make a quick announcement. I want to let everybody know that myself, Sea Garner Speed 252, Horsepower Obsessed, Cars Guys, and DZR1 Messiah will all be under the same tent at Corvettes of Carlisle 2019. The dates are August 22nd through the 25th. All five of us will be there together all four days. So please make sure, come out, see us, greet us, uh, get pictures with us. I'm sure we'll all have uh, merch for you guys to purchase if you, know, you want to. But uh, we'd just love to meet you guys. So come out and see us at Corvettes of Carlisle. Today we are going to talk about Chevy and if they could stay with a front engine Corvette and still succeed. First, I want to say that I agree with Chevy taking the Corvette to a new mid-engine platform. It will definitely take them to a higher competitive ground. However, I want to tell you why Chevy could have left the Corvette as is and still done amazing things with it. Even though Chevy already gave us the breathtaking C7 body style, it still could have improved in a few areas. Just one example would be them not adding diffuser fins in the rear. As you can see here, this Corvette has aftermarket diffuser fins, and I think that's one major uh, outside component that GM missed when building the Corvette. I really think they should have added these fins to the C7. Also, the interior could be improved with finer materials and higher quality gadgets. As you can see in these pictures, man, look at that gorgeous interior. This would attract even more people than the C7 did. This is what Chevy wants to do anyway sell more Corvettes. Chevy could use lighter materials like they did with the C5 and C6 Z06 and could have given us a lighter Corvette than the C7. This would have been beneficial to anyone who loves to track their Corvette, which is an already phenomenal track car, even more of a leg up on the competition, all while remaining a front engine car. They could have also come out with a multi-engine platform for each of the models, just like they used to in the old days. They were giving people two to three engine choices per Corvette model back in the 1960s. This also would have spiked the interest of many car enthusiasts out there that really don't give the Corvette two looks. Can you imagine if you could build a Corvette Z51 that only weighs 3,100 pounds, has a 4.2 liter twin turbo V8 with 550 horsepower, or someone could just get a base model with a 6.2 liter V8 and still have 500 horsepower. Imagine if you could have the ability to pick two different engines for the Z06. First being a high revving 4.5 liter twin turbo V8 with 650 horsepower and a lower revving 5.5 liter twin turbo V8 with 750 horsepower and so on. Can you imagine being able to have the choice between 650 horsepower or 750 horsepower in a Z06? Next we come to one of my favorite things. Chevy could make a true, and when I say true, I mean pure track Corvette. Yes, I know, the Grand Sport through ZR1 are all amazing track capable Corvettes, but I'm talking about a bare bones, stripped down track car. This would be just like a Porsche GT2 or 3 RS. I wouldn't even want this car to have a second seat in it. And no radio, no cup holders, no storage compartments, just bare bones. Then comes the super exciting part. 
this car would only weigh 2,700 pounds and they give you four different engine options on it. These would of course be special order only and would sell for sure. Check out that gorgeous Corvette. Now, I don't know who built this car, but I thought it was a pretty cool picture of a C7 built to be a race car. This absolutely blows my mind that Chevy hasn't come out with this yet. An all-wheel drive option on these Corvettes. So one of the reasons Chevy says they need to move to a mid-engine platform is because of traction issues. With the engine sitting up front and no weight in the rear, you can only get so much traction to a large set of rear tires and then torque takes over and a light rear end allows major tire spin. All-wheel drive would solve this immediately. Now, not everyone would want all-wheel drive, but there would be a huge amount of people that would pay extra all day long for this option. And again, I don't see why Chevrolet hasn't come out with this option for Corvettes yet. One last thing that Chevy could have done with the front engine to make it sell even better than the C7 is come out with three to four exotic colors. Give us a crazy green, crazy purple, an iridescent, and a rare blue. Check out all four of these McLarens. If we could buy Corvettes that look like these, wouldn't that be amazing? I think it would be. Now, would any of this help with competing on the highest level in racing? No, and that's what Chevy was mostly concerned about. Not to mention the traction issues and also really wanting to dive into the mid-engine, supercar, and exotic car world. Going mid-engine fulfills all of the above and Chevy can still do all of these six things I mentioned to the mid-engine Corvette. In closing, could Chevy stay with a front-engine Corvette and continue to do well? Yes, but will Chevy do even bigger and better things with the mid-engine Corvette? Absolutely. This opens the doors to endless opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me today. Um, I'm going to remind you one more time here to join us at Corvettes at Carlisle 2019. The dates again are August 22nd through the 25th. And again, you will be seeing Justin from Horsepower Obsessed, Clarence from Seagarner Speed 252, D from DZR1 Messiah, and JT from Cars Guys, along with myself, all under the same tent at Corvettes at Carlisle. Now, this is really special because I'm friends with all these guys. There's going to be five YouTubers. I know a lot of us have the same people in our communities, but we also have people that are different from each other's communities. And so it'll be a great time for us to get to know you guys, our fans. And by the way, we are all fans of you guys. So again, come meet us, come greet us, and we look forward to seeing you at Corvette to Carlisle 2019. Now, with that being said, I hope each and every one of you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what your opinion is on this whole front engine, mid engine Corvette, whether you think that Chevy could have remained with a front engine and stayed successful, or if you agree that it was time for them to go mid engine or not. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure and give me a big thumbs up. If you have not joined the Brink of Speed community yet, make sure and smash that red subscribe and bell notification so that you're notified when my new content comes out. And that's it, guys. I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful rest of the week, and I will see you out on the road.